I want to turn now to uh, Jay Baker. He is the son of the enormously popular televangelist Jim Baker and Tammy Faye Baker Mesner. He's also the author of A Fall to Grace, A Revolution of God, Self and Society. What do you think listening to Randy there? It's heartbreaking. I, 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 I hear it all the time. And uh, to think of his uncle and to think that he was in a place of suicide and that the church is, is making people feel like they don't want to live anymore. And somehow getting that confused with Jesus is uh, mind-boggling to me. Mm -hmm. Do you think you got this from your mom? Because your mom <laughs> was enormously supportive of gay rights, at least, and, and was really one of the first sort of evangelists to reach out to gay people. Yeah, I mean, she was doing it in 82 and 83, and, you know, I think so. Um, she definitely influenced me very strongly, and I took it to the, I guess I took it to the next level, but she was definitely a, a big influence on me. Yeah, she was also one of the first people to, to care for for people with AIDS. Yeah. And you remember, I mean, when they were shunned, people didn't know what, you know, yeah, how you got terrified. it. And she said she didn't care. Yeah, she said, we got to love these people. we got to reach out to these people. And, and, and did interviews and stuff like that. And, you know, I, th I don't even think Ronald Reagan had, had said the word AIDS, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And if it, people say if it wasn't for C. Everett Coop, um, that many more people would have died under, on Reagan's watch. Yeah. And I mean, it's, just, it's, it's, it's amazing that, um, this, just the sadness and, and uh, the denial that so many people have. Yeah. You're a pastor now, and you preach an all-inclusiveness sort of doctrine. That's what you believe. And are, are you criticized by other Christians and by other people who are in the church for doing that? Definitely. Or you're yeah, definitely, people? definitely. Um, I mean, when I first said I was gay-affirming, which is we accept gay people, we don't think it's a sin, um, I had to let my whole staff go. <laughs> can, can you stop right there? You said... You accept gay people, you don't believe it's a sin. That's yeah. the whole thing about, about Christianity or about church. They say that it's a sin. Yeah, yeah. They get hung up on a, on a few scriptures that really, in, in my opinion, have been taken out of context. And they almost let them trump love your neighbor as yourself. It's, it's really a scary thing. Mm -hmm. You had to let go of your whole staff? Right? Yeah, I had five staff members at the time and had to let the staff go. I didn't speak for about a year. All my speaking engagements got canceled. Um, but things are changing. This, that was about five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. My thing is, how do you get young people to go back into the church, especially nowadays, when young people are saying about social issues, they really don't care as much as they used to. They're more, at least more open and more progressive about those issues. I want to talk to you about, about how you get young people to go back into the church, especially when you have, um, when you espouse views like you, if you think that's the future, or... Some people are going to criticize you for it. We're going to have more with Jay Baker in just a minute. I am back now with Jay Baker, son of televangelist couple Jim Baker and Tammy Faye. Uh, he is now a pastor himself, and he preaches all inclusiveness. So listen, do you think that this is the next generation of Christian? Because I know that after the scandal hit your family, you felt that you were deserted by yeah. Christians and you sort of felt isolated. Was this your motivation here? Well, I mean, my motivation was, I, I mean, I felt isolated. I thought God hated me until I was about 19, 20 years old and started reading the Bible for myself and realizing that, wow, the Bible does have a lot of good news. There's a lot of grace there. And a lot of the stuff I had seen before just wasn't, didn't mesh. And so I was really shocked that, uh, that I was loved and accepted. Mm. And I wanted other people to experience that. Religion is supposed to be. It's supposed to be all inclusiveness. It's supposed to be about that. So why is there so little of it in the church that we see these days? Or is that just what we focus on? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the re religious people are always looking to find out who doesn't fit in, who's not accepted, who doesn't get to receive grace. I mean, religion has been notorious for, for being on the wrong side of history for so many things in the United States just in the past hundred years, you know. So I think... Uh, people have got to stop using it for that. I mean, it's, it's the thing of, of loving people. And I think they think, well, if I follow a religion, I can love people just this way, and then I can find little loopholes of people I don't have to love. Mm -hmm. Or I can say I love them and just treat them like hell, you know? And uh, I think we really have to get away from that because we're not loving our neighbors as ourselves. Or people who say ugly things about, about certain people, and then they say, I'm not, but I'm not judging, but I'm not judging, but I can say that you're going to go to hell or that you're, it's a... <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You have a very unconventional look. I mean, look at the, you got, <laughs> we call them a sleeve. Let me see that. You've got it on your fingers there. Do you, um, do you think that there, I guess there's room for 
for everyone. That's part of your message. It doesn't matter how you look. You don't have to be, you know, wear a suit and tie or khakis and a, a jacket. To, to yeah, church. no, no. I mean, um, my, my, my biggest hero is Martin Luther King Jr. And I think he's preached such a beautiful, inclusive message that, you know, everyone's welcome. Hmm. Do you think a lot of young people have a, a, a misconception about what it's like or what it's supposed to be like to be a Christian or to be a religious person? Yeah, definitely. I think there's like a tradition, a traditional type of Christianity that says you don't listen to this, you don't hang out with these people, you don't go to these places. And people just fall into it and then they read the Bible through particular glasses mm -hmm. and see scriptures certain ways. And they're told to do exactly the opposite thing that Jesus did. Jesus was known to hang out with sinners. They called him a wine bibber or a drunk, you know, a friend of the worst type of people. And then we're told, don't go to these places, don't do these things, don't follow the example of Jesus. It's like we've rewritten the scripture somehow, and it doesn't make any sense to me. You, you realize, though, that you're saying some pretty subversive things, and more traditional, people with more traditional views, especially heads of churches and, and preachers and pastors are going to say, oh, well, that's, he's just, it's just the devil. Yeah, I've grown, up, I've, I've grown up with that, so I know that, yeah, they do say it's the devil, or they say that, you know, I'm compromising or I'm trying to win you know, approval of people, and I'm like, you know, you don't understand. <laughs> you guys, you know, I almost went bankrupt when, you, when I said I love everybody. You know, this wasn't a popularity contest. This was just me following a deep conviction. And it all came from understanding God's grace and God's love. You know, they say, I've always had people say, Jay, you know, too much grace. It's a slippery slope, you know. Too much grace. Yeah, and it is a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope to loving everybody, and I, <laughs> I, I'm glad I got to slide on down it. Do you think that... Um... <laughs> It has been said that fire and brimstone really is about mind control and about controlling people to be like what you think they should be or how you want them to be. Do you think it's about control? Yeah, I think it's about control, and I also think it's about preachers who are worried about how their congregation is going to reflect on them. I know there, there was times in my life where I wanted everybody to be really good in my church because I was afraid what people would think about me. Yeah, but if you go through therapy <laughs> as a person and when you think about you, you know, how your family is going to reflect on you or how someone else reflects, that is the ultimate narcissism, and that's yeah. really about you and not in a good way than it is about the people. No, and we don't confront people. that in the church. We just say it's normal and it's healthy. And it becomes a control situation uh, rather than a loving situation, rather than get to know people. I mean, you know, I used to ask all sorts of questions growing up and, you know, they would, oh, you shouldn't answer that or you shouldn't do that. Or, you shouldn't say this. This is how we think and this is how it's always been done. Yeah. And uh, the church has suffered because of that type you, of thinking. You realize it's, it's, it's quite a thing to have. It's all locked. It's all built in. You mm -hmm. cannot, if you disobey or go against and you're doing something wrong and you're going to go to hell or it's blasphemy or whatever, it's all kind of built in to sort of get people to do what you want them to do and not necessarily what the actual scripture says. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's definitely built in. People have made hell into like, you know, I mean, since Dante's Inferno, I mean, they've just made hell into something worse and worse and worse and worse and all this scary place to terrify people. Yeah, I mean, it is, it was a way to control people. It's yeah. a way to, um, also, I think it's a way to feel better about yourself. You think, well, I'll follow these rules and these rules and these rules and this will connect me to God. But when you're under grace, you just kind of have to trust yeah. And faith. You're talking about how I uh, recently read the book. I can't remember his name. You're talking Rob about Bell? Is it Rob Bell. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think that there, he said there is no hell? He basically. doesn't go exactly that far, but uh, I didn't think he went far enough, actually. But I thought it was a great book, and I think it needed to be said. What do you mean he didn't go far enough? Well, I think, you know, the, he, he, he went almost to the point where saying there is no hell. And uh, I think what we've made hell out to be is, is this, this place that God's this horrible God, a horrible, angry father that turns people away. And I just don't, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't add up in the scriptures. And when you look at the actual translations of hell, there's like three different words. But he went, did such a beautiful thing in that book as far as asking people, how do you get saved? And he showed like 15 different ways people came to Jesus in the, in, in the Bible. And so there's really no, this is how we do it. It's the church who said, this is how we do it. So I think, you know, I think hell is, is, is a tactic to scare and frighten people. Yeah. I think God loves us more than we can ever grasp and ever understand, and I think a loving God doesn't do that, and I'm called a heretic because of that, but uh, that's where I'll stand. But isn't, didn't, didn't Jesus say, get, don't, you know, if I'm wrong, tell me, didn't Jesus say you should question, question, question everything, and if you question, if you question doctrine or what well, people he say? Yeah, I mean, well, him and Paul both said that, but it wasn't just that he said that, he did that. You know, the people that Jesus continuously rebuked were the religious people of the day. Mm -hmm. They'd ask questions, and then he'd ask questions back. So Jesus was always continuously pushing. You know, someone would say, well, 
what do I do to get internal life? Love your neighbor yourself. And then they said, well, then who's my neighbor? And then Jesus would go, well, your neighbor's your enemy. Yeah. And yeah. Well, wait a second, you yeah. know? I think it's interesting what you say. We have a presidential election coming up. Yeah. And you talk about politics and religion and whether the two should meet. <laughs> if there's too much religion in politics and vice versa. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. I'm back now having a fascinating conversation with Jay Baker. Can we talk some politics here? Uh, you said it seems like Michelle Bachman, Rick Perry, they're fighting for the Christian vote here. W what do you make of that? Oh, it's, to me it's irrelevant. I mean, it's not. They're, they're, they're playing to a group of people who, are, who, are, who, who deal a lot with fear and, and, and using fear to control folks. To me, I'm a, I'm a person of faith, and they don't seem to be pulling me in at all. You know, it, it almost seems like... You're hearing people who believe in, in uh, and I've been accused of this myself, but almost like, you know, these type of like fairy tales or type of things where they're, mm -hmm. and it's scary to think that, that these people want to, you know, that I feel like they've kind of hijacked Christianity. What do you mean by fairy tales? What do you? Well, you know what I mean? They're just like, well, you know, God put us here and we're all going to hell, you know, all this, and there's no global warming and there's no, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, we're going to, we're going to ignore science, we're going to ignore, you know, uh, archaeology, we're going to ignore all these things, because that's what people do, they just pick and choose, you know, what they want to believe and what they don't want to believe. You know, it, it's hard for people, for example, like when they find out books of the Bibles, weren't, certain books of the Bibles weren't written by who they're claimed to be written by, right. so they automatically, they go, well, that was a compliment back then, you know, and you're like, no, it and wasn't. And certain things in the Bible, I, I, I really most of it, I would have to say, and I, this is, I'm just giving you my opinion here, okay. just from reading it, and I went to the Catholic school, I was raised Baptist, studied with a Jehovah's Witness for a while. Most of the times, it's just about lessons, and I think sometimes, do pe you feel that people take that too literally like when you say Jonah lived in the belly of a whale is that more about the lesson than Jonah actually living in the belly of a whale yeah I mean the idea that I, I think that that was written almost as as satire I don't yeah. think Jonah really lived in the belly of a whale but people don't like to hear that they say well you start questioning this and then when you're gonna question that you know I love the Bible yeah you know it's a collection of scrolls Beautiful it's book, a collections right? of books I love it I'm passionate about it um, and people told me to read it and study it more and so I did and when I did I started to find out things that they didn't like. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start to go back to the historical backgrounds of the Bible and the Greek and the Hebrew, you start to realize different things and then you go out and talk about it and they're like, whoa, 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 we don't talk about that. If you want to, if you, if you don't have a good read, so oh, there's nothing out there, read the Bible. It's an amazingly written book and it's a beautiful book. Let's talk more politics here. Do you think that there's too much religion and politics, politics and religion? Yeah, I mean, it, to me, it seems like it's it's just been so, like, overdone. It seems like the 80s. You know, in the 80s, it was really scary. In the 90s, it was really scary. Now it's just kind of like, it's almost like they're, they're, uh, they're a skit or something. Yeah. You know, Turning young people off away from church Definitely. And I mean, it, it does, but I think people are kind of tired of politics right now. Um, and they want to see change happening. They want to see people accepted. They want to see people have drinking water. They want to see the poor being taken care of. Yeah, that's more important yeah. than whether or not. And, and that's exciting, whether, what, whether or not even what you believe. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Fascinating conversation. Uh, I could sit here and talk to you forever. As a matter of fact, we're going to do it after the show. <laughs> Thanks, Jay Baker. Uh, Jay's book is called Fall to Grace. I want to thank everybody for watching. Have a great night.